18th chapter. I want to rehearse that verse and two other verses as we begin to suck on the word of God. Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knitted to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own. And if you will turn with me to chapter 20, verse 31. For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, you shall not be established, nor your king. Now, therefore, Send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. And verse 41, as soon as the lad had gone, David arose from a place towards himself, fell on his face to the ground, and bowed down three times, and they kissed one another, and they wept together. But David wept more. And Jonathan said to David, go in peace. Since we have both sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, May the Lord be between you and me, and between your descendants and my descendants forever. So he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Amen. The time that is mine, I'm going to preach from the thought, Friends are family. Friends are family. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you yet again for the day. We thank you for the word. For we're just pilgrims in this barren land. We're weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us with your powerful hand. The bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Heavenly God. Fill us with your power. Anoint us with your love. Lord, get the glory. Save, heal, and deliver. Transform, renew. Shake up. Break down. Tear down. Release, O oh God, in your spirit. Save somebody today. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's what you two said. Uh, family is unique. You don't choose your family. They are a gift. A gift to you from God. Your family can be your strength and your weakness. Your family can bring you joy and sorrow Families can be complicated because oftentimes it's not based on relationship but blood. Families vary in degrees of relationships. Some relationships are strong while others are distant. If daddy was a rolling stone, y'all know, wherever he laid his hat, oh, y'all know. There may be family members you may not know about. On the other hand, you may know about them, but not in contact with them. But they're going to show up. Because somebody's got to go be called home. And y'all know how funerals are. My father, my father had children in East Baltimore. At the same time, he had them in West Baltimore. He took a 20 year break and had me and my siblings. I'm so glad 
Amen. Amen. I'm not the only one who has siblings outside the house, so don't look at me like that. I, I've talked with them occasionally, but our association is based on blood, not relationship. You cannot lose family based on blood, but you can lose the connection, the bond with the family. And oftentimes the connection is lost because we take family for granted. Yes, we, we take family for granted. We, we stop speaking. We stop calling. We stop dropping by to check on them. Sometimes families are disconnected because there's abuse in the family. You know how families are. They like to use you take advantage of you, expecting you to put up with just about anything and accepting everything they do. Why? Because we family. But you don't have to deal with that. Why? Because they are friends. You don't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. Uh, Euripides says, one loyal friend is worth 10,000 relatives. Somebody knows what he's talking about. The beauty of friendship is it's not based on association. It, the friendship is not based on blood. The friendship is based on relationship. You are friends because you know each other and you like each other. And so in our text, in our text, the king of Israel, Saul, has a son named Jonathan who has befriend, uh, uh, become friends with David, who is the future king of Israel. Saul was the king chosen by the people, but David was anointed king because he was anointed by Saul who God sent to anoint David. After seeing seven of, uh, of Jesse's sons, God had not spoken, and Samuel asked, is there another son? And Jesse says, yes, my youngest son is out keeping the sheep. He says, go get him. And when seeing David, God tells Samuel, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. From that day forward, the Bible said the Spirit was upon David. The Bible says in that day the Spirit departed from Saul. There was a change. David was anointed and Saul lost his anointing. David's popularity grew. He killed the lion, the champion of the Philistines, the giant. Saul was jealous of David's accomplishment. Saul uh, was upset because the people were, uh, found favor with David. The people were singing the songs, as, songs of praise. And they were saying, Saul has killed his thousand, but David has killed his ten thousand. Saul was envious of David's anointing, afraid of his blessing. David's anointing caused Saul to hate him and plot his death. Let me tell somebody, people are not going to like you because of your anointing. No, y'all didn't hear me. Uh, Pastor John Gray helps me here. He helps us here. He says, you mad because I'm blessed. Take it up with God. He says, you mad because I'm anointed. Take it up with God. Tell your distractors, those who don't like you. You don't, you know why you don't like me? 
because I'm anointed. Uh, tell somebody, uh, uh, you know why you don't like me? Because you can't control me. Do you know why you don't like me? Because I'm tall, I'm anointed, and I'm appointed. Ah, uh, ah, uh, y'all don't feel me. David was anointed by God, and it upset Saul. Tell somebody, if you don't like me, take it up with God. Because I'm God's servant. You're God's servant. You are called by God to do that which God has called you to do. And if people don't like you, they can see God. David, 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 David was God's anointed king. Yet Saul plotted to kill him. God had chosen him, yet Saul plotted to kill him. And here's what's important. He chose to use his family to do it. But God, but God, but God raises up a friend. For David in the family. He raises up Jonathan, the son of Saul. The text says Jonathan was knitted, became friends with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. But when Saul sought to kill David, Jonathan came to his defense, asking, his father, what has he done to you? That you want to kill him? Jonathan and David were friends. The true friend is someone who will defend you. Defend your name in the midst of your detractors. In the presence of your enemy, true friends will speak up for you. In the midst of your enemy, true friends will vote for your character. Friendship won't easily be abandoned just because of the people around. When the father sought to kill David, Jonathan stood up for his righteousness. Jonathan stood up for his friend against his father. And Saul was so mad. The Bible says he called him out of his name. You son of a you son of a perverse and rebellious woman. <laughs> he was so mad he talked about his son and the mother. True friends will say I love you. True, said, true friends will be your friends whether my other friends don't like it or not. Just because you don't like somebody doesn't mean I have to dislike them. That's not friendship, that's fellowship. A friend is not guided by association, but by love. Jonathan loved David. God's anointed, and he blessed him to be his friend. And my question this morning is, will you do the right thing? Can you befriend someone the family doesn't like? Can you befriend someone friends don't like? Can you uh, befriend someone co-workers don't like? Can you show some independence? Can you be an individual? Do you have to follow everybody to hell in a handbasket? A friend for yourself. Jonathan and David were ready. They were nearly the same age. David lived in the house of Saul. Jonathan loved him as himself. Their relationship was tight and it was unbroken. It was a bond that could not be broken. A friendship that uh, was connected by the soul. God's mercy towards David allowed him to 
gain a friend in a place filled with enemies. I'm going to shout right there. Somebody ought to shout right where you are. Lord, thank you for friends. 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 Thank you for putting friends around me. I might not be here with a whole bunch of family. It might be me and my wife, but thank you for raising up friends over here. Friends over here. And friends got a whole bunch of friends behind me. Because if without friends, the enemy can take you out. Friends will give you joy when you're running empty. Friends will help you out in the midst of your trouble. Friends are there because they know who you are. Mm. But being a friend is not easy. I read it for you in Psalm uh, 1 Samuel 20. 31. Jonathan gets to the place where he must make a choice. A choice between obeying God or obeying his father. A choice between uh, uh, obeying his, the will of God or his earthly father. Jonathan refuses to go against God's anointing. He refuses to go against God's chosen vessel. He would not go against his friend. Can I tell you something? The most dangerous person on earth is a fake friend. You don't need them. Life is too short. Get rid of those fake friends. Get rid of those friends that say something to you one day and say something to somebody else the next. They, they don't care for you. They don't love you. They, they just want to keep you around to get whatever they can from you. But if they really loved you, they wouldn't talk about you. I'm trying to help somebody. So, in his hatred towards David, Friends 
our children. Friends are tribe. Friends are connected to you. I'm, 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 I'm pressing this point because I want you to see the difference. Friends are siblings. God never gave you, but they show up in your life. Thank God for family. But there is another family. Ah, uh, the family you come from is not as important as the family you are going to have. I gotta say that again because the family you come from is not as important as the family you are going to have. Why, preacher? Because everybody in your blood family ain't going to get to heaven. But the Spirit of the Lord hear and receive a family made up of friends there is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother who is a friend and a family member. His name is Jesus. Y'all know where I'm going. Uh, Jesus believed in friendship. Jesus often spoke of friends Jesus says, you are my friend if you do what I ask of you. He had friends, Martha and Mary and Lazarus was his friends. He had disciples, but Peter, James and John were his friends. Jesus wants to be your friend. Jesus is your friend. What are you talking about, preacher? No friend of love has no man. Anybody know who he is? 
Anybody know him as your friend? Won't he help you? Won't he bless you? Won't he heal you? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he save you? Won't he put family back together? Won't he heal you when the doctor said there ain't no hope? Won't he teach you in the midst of the your storm? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? As a friend, you got all you need. Grandma said, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm finished. I just wanted to remind you on this great family.